So something really significant happened uh, roughly 10 years ago when Jeff Hinton with two of his students, Alex Kruchevsky and Ilya Sutskever, they obtained a breakthrough in computer vision. And the way they obtained this breakthrough was to train a very, very large neural network. What was significant about this work was not the fact that they used a neural network, because at the time we already knew that neural networks were efficient AI models. What was really significant and surprising is that they used a very large one. In fact, so large that its size, its number of parameters was larger than the size of the training set, the number of examples that they were using. And this is surprising because we know from very classical 19th century mathematics that you never need to use more variables, more parameters than the number of equations that you are trying to solve or the number of data points that you have access to. So this phenomenon of using more variables than number of equations is what we call overparameterization, and it's really a mystery why it's working. Yet, despite being a mystery, this has been a trend that has grown in strength over the years. And now, in fact, you know, it's stronger than ever, it's more prevalent than ever. And the most recent breakthrough in, in you know, the AI space was the GPT-3 language model by OpenAI, whose size is 10,000 times bigger than what they did you know, back in 2012. Um, so this, this uh, Overparameterization is really mysterious and we don't understand it yet, you know, it's now part of the standard toolkit for machine learning. So we really want to understand its underpinnings. The law of robustness is a new phenomenon that we've discovered in a series of papers here at uh, Microsoft Research. And basically it dispels part of the mystery of overparameterization. So as I just told you, you know, we have known for now almost two centuries that you don't need to use more variables than number of equations when you want to interpolate a data set. Now, what the law of robustness tells you is that this equation, number of variables being related to number of equations, it changes dramatically when you ask to interpolate smoothly. Namely, you have your data set, you want your model to you know, memorize this data set, but you also want that you're, when you move away from the data that you've seen, you you prediction change very smoothly. They don't change drastically. So as soon as you introduce this robustness constraint, what the law of robustness tells you is that overparameterization is unavoidable. You cannot do it if you don't dramatically overparameterize. So maybe to put it simply, really what the law of robustness does is that it graduates overparameterization from a trick to a mathematical truth. And its impact and its meaning for the future of deep learning is that current, you know, very large AI models, they are here to stay. This is not some, you know, trend that is going to pass. We really have to learn how to deal with these very large models. So that's the really exciting part, is that I think the law of robustness opens many directions for uh, future work. One example, very concrete, is, would be to verify empirically the law of robustness. In the paper, we make very concrete prediction on existing data sets. For example, for ImageNet, which is a data set that was used in the breakthrough 10 years ago, current models, they use roughly 500 million parameters and they are not robust. They are not solving the problem robustly. And this is not a surprise to us, because in the paper, we predict that if you want to solve ImageNet robustly, you will need billions of parameters, probably around 10 billion parameters. So what would be great would be to simply test this theory empirically, try to train robustly a neural net with 10 billion parameters and see if it succeeds on ImageNet. And if it does, then it will be a great verification of the law of robustness. But I think more generally, the law of robustness really put the spotlight on some of the main open problems of the field. For example, once you reach this enormous, humongous scale, does it really make sense to still run the classical training where on every example you update all the parameters? Or maybe should we be inspired by the brain where there are different regions of the network that are dedicated to different tasks and different types of examples? So I find you know, this confluence of mathematics, computer science, and neuroscience to be incredibly exciting. And I really can't wait to see what happens in this space in the next few years. Thank you.